Yes, guys. Hello. We are back. Yeah, I've heard actually I've actually heard about Benji. I mean, these new uh, base meme coins are quite a uh, these new base meme coins are quite a thing, man. They are uh, they're pretty hot right now. Yeah, like he had like they they haven't um the base meme coins are really hot right now, so this one coming up does not surprise me. I mean, I don't know about official dog meme coin. I'm not really sure if there's anything. I don't know if there's anything such as an official dog meme coin, but yeah, the first like the first big one that comes up, they do tend to grow really large. So you definitely could have something there. I, I don't really know like how the how long the new memes last, but you know it is what it is. Um, hey guys, hey guys. So yeah, Bitcoin's recovered from this morning's shortfall. I think the KuCoin news blew over, and I don't, I didn't think the KuCoin news was gonna cause uh, too much problems, anyways. So yeah, I mean, forty-five million isn't that much. No, so, some of the Solana coins, some of the Solana coins got up over a billion dollars. So there's still some room to grow there. I don't know if the base coins will grow as quite as big as the Solana coins, but maybe. I think one of the things with base is that it doesn't have a coin itself. So that might hurt it a little bit in the long run, but it shouldn't matter too much for these meme coins, honestly. It really shouldn't. How about Harrow? Base is taking over? I don't necessarily think base is taking over. I think base is just kind of like the, the, the new big thing right now. It's just kind of like the new shiny thing. Like the, the whole thing started on Solana and now like some of it's moved to base. But it's not like Ethereum where people are going to leave Solana. Because like... Solana's like Solana's still pretty cheap. Uh, uh, Solana's still cheap and fast to use. It's not like Ethereum where it was like really expensive and slow to use. So it doesn't really have that issue. Yeah, Bay Arrow's doing pretty well, but Arrow's also not a meme coin. Arrow's more of like a DeFi. Do I think HBAR can surpass Ethereum? Not in this bull run, no. I doubt anything's really going to pass Ethereum in this bull run out of all the smart contract platforms. Like I just I don't really see I don't really see anything passing Ethereum uh, in this particular bull run. Next, like you know, in the future, who knows? Becomes worth more than solid producing stocks. I guess the ease of moving wealth around the blockchain. It's also because people really like to speculate. You know, it it's really because people really like to speculate. Um, so. It's much more easy to speculate and pump and dump cryptos than stocks. I mean, penny stocks aren't hard to pump and dump, but there's way more regulatory stuff around there. And since you don't, since you don't have as much regulation around cryptos and it's more of a loose market, people like to use this opportunity to pump and dump and make fast money. It's about the fast money, man. And like, I think even though a lot of people have gotten pwned in the crypto market, most people in the crypto market would still rather the SEC just lay off the crypto and just like regulate stocks and stuff. So, I mean, crypto, is, I think crypto is always going to be somewhat about speculation and investment. You know, like it, it's going to be gambling, investment, speculation, everything rolled up into one. Like the big coins, like the big top 50 might be more like investment and then the rest of it might just be speculation. But it's not like the regulatory agencies can actually like get rid of the speculation. And I realistically, I don't even think they really care about the speculation. I think just, they just want to make sure that people pay taxes. I think as long as they, as I think as long as they KYC AML, pretty much all the off ramps, I don't think people are going to have much choice in that. So I think like they're caring is like, you know, there's no money. Well, there's no like, uh, there's no like terrorist financing. Like, all they really want to do is make sure there's no tariffs financing and, like, that everyone pays taxes. I mean, taxes are their main concern because that's, like, government revenue. That's basically it. There are way more crypto scammers than bank robbers. It's way... Well, I mean, that's obvious. It's it's so much easier to scam crypto and get away with it than rob a bank and get away with it. I mean, if you try to rob a bank, you're, like, you know, there's a good chance you're going to get pwned. If you... If you try to scam people in crypto, the worst thing that can happen is your scam doesn't work. So obviously there's way more scammers in crypto. The risk is just not there for scammers in crypto. Whereas like bank robbers, man, you get pwned pretty well. You can get pwned really, really big, you know? So it's definitely like, uh, it's it's kind of like, a, definitely like a different tier, how how you'd say. Like it's definitely a, a, a completely different tier. 
So yeah, definitely like a, a little bit strange there. But either way, let's talk about the Ripple stuff because they just got uh, they just got hammered for 1.95 billion dollars, and they're gonna uh, there's I don't think there's any way they're gonna really pay this. Um, so they're going to fight this, obviously. So SEC seeks 1.95 billion fine and final judgment against Ripple. By the way, I do think this judgment's complete BS, and I don't think the government's going to grant. I don't think the courts are going to grant it because they're definitely going way overboard. They haven't even like like uh, the Judge Torres's judgment only said like X was a security, like that like uh, only institutional sales were securities. I also hope this doesn't go through. Because this would set a really bad precedent for the rest of the market. Ripple, like XRP investors really don't want this to go through because I don't actually think Ripple has $1.95 billion in cash, which means they would have to dump a lot more XRP. But it's really bad for the rest of the market as well because then the SEC would sue other crypto projects for large amounts, at least for the uh, those that they sold to institutions. So the SEC has asked a New York judge to impose a fine of $1.95 billion on Ripple Labs. The SEC asked the, asked the court to consider how easily it actors, particularly in crypto asset space, can today engage in the same sort of conduct as Ripple's. I mean, I, I, I mean, like, they're just having, like, they're considering uh, securities, the stuff that Ripple sold as institutional investment, but that's a really murky area. And I think the uh, the eventual fine is going to be a very small percentage of this. I remember with the uh, that one case, I forgot exactly what coin it was because it was kind of insignificant. Oh, the LBRY thing. They asked for tens of millions. They got hundreds of thousands. So just because they asked for $1.95 million does not mean they're going to get anywhere near $1.95 million. So basically... Um, on Monday, Stuart Hourly, Ripple Labs legal ch chief legal officer, posted to social media that the SEC was asking for such a fine and that the redacted versions of the court documents would be made available by March 26. I think there's going to be like an uproar against the SEC. And there's members of Congress that are asking SEC about like Prometheum and like the whole securities issue because they haven't really determined that cryptos are a security yet. And Gary Ginzer refuses to say that Ethereum is a security, although they are investigating Ethereum. So the breakdown of the civil penalty is $876 million in disgorgement, $198 million in pre Judge, judgment interest and 876 million in civil penalty amounting to a total of 1.95 billion dollars that's where you're getting the 1.95 billion dollars i think that's way way too much and i highly doubt i do think it's going to be con con contentious so i do not actually think this is going to resolve i don't think this is going to resolve in 2024 i think you're going to have to wait another year or two before this all resolves which means, yeah, I mean, like, everyone's going to be, everything's going to be kind of hanging by a thread on this, and it kind of sucks. And we do need the SEC to be pwned or to be, like, beat down in the legal sense, because if it's not, it's bad for all crypto. I mean, there. look, it's actually pretty, it, it's pretty standard to ask for an insane judgment and then, like, basically only pay a small part of that judgment, uh, what makes you think we have a short squeeze? There's a lot of shorts on the table right now. And there's a lot of shorts stacked up um, from that last dip that haven't been liquidated yet. So I think there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of shorts here between here and like 73K. And I think it's an easy way to liquidate because like there's still positive pressure from ETFs. And that's like an easy liquidation point for whales. Um, there's like, there's also like more shorts stacked up than longs right now. So it's more, I think it's more profitable to liquidate the shorts at this point. So I think there's going to be a pretty big shorts liquidation. Um, and that definitely could be something that we want to look at. So that is what, that's one way that we could actually get to 75 K because a massive shorts liquidation from here up to 73 could easily bring us to 75 or it possibly even higher the shorts and the longs like the, the price isn't balanced and like the price really isn't balanced and there's more shorts and longs around this range so like i think like it's way more likely that the shorts liquidate and bring us up because like the the buying pressure right now is still in an upward direction and like uh, just because we had that kucoin thing does not mean it can be suppressed down all that easily well it happened this week i'm not really sure if it'll happen this week but it will happen sometime soon um It'll happen within the next couple of weeks. I think before the halving, we're definitely going to reach 75K though, uh, before the halving. So I, I definitely, I, I do think it, we will actually get there this week. Uh, not this week, like at least uh, sometime like in the next two weeks, but 
very, very possibly in the next two days, because this could definitely happen at any time. So like, you know, there's other people noticing this as well. There's other people, no there's definitely other people noticing this as well um, on the shorts liquidation front. And people are actually talking about this. I don't know if people expect it or not, because I still think there's a good number of people that expect us to go all the way down to like 30K or something, which is kind of ridiculous at this point. No, they're not longing, like longing 73K isn't a bad idea. But the thing is like, but, but right now, there's more shorts than longs at this point. And there's way more, uh, there, there's, uh, I think there's more, there's, there's going to be more liquidations happening uh, up than down. So like, this is a textbook sign that shorts are being squeezed as we hit fresh all time high territory. So like, remember during the, remember we had a dip, we had a really nice dip last week. And I think people piled up shorts during that dip. Not all of them have been liquid. I mean, not that many of them actually have been liquidated yet. So like as Bitcoin toes around the 70K mark, there's speculation that short-term sellers are feeling, feeling pressure due to diminishing downward downtrends and quicker moving uptrends, potentially driving Bitcoin's price to 80K, according to one analyst. This, this is a textbook sign that shorts are being squeezed. And as we hit fresh all-time high territory, um, the Kabasi letter explained that the main factor for the BTC short squeeze is the margin between institutional long positions and hedge fund short positions at a record high. So essentially, like, I think hedge funds have more short positions than institutions have long positions. Actually, no, like, uh, the other way around, like, institutions actually have more long positions than hedge fund have, like, more short positions. But, and those, and, and I do think, like, a lot of those hedge fund short positions can be liquidated. So meanwhile, it noted that Bitcoin price dips keep on getting shorter and shorter. So, like, you know, one price dip, it's not quite as big as the last one. So like here are the liquidation points. Bitcoin's current price is 70,480. If it reaches 71K, 156.18 million in short positions will be liquidated. A climb to 75K would liquidate 3.85 billion in short positions. So there is a lot of stacked short positions between here and 75K, and those can easily be liquidated, sending us much, much higher. And remember, Bitcoin's all-time high is not that far off. So we're still in that territory of like searching for a new high. So I think like if you're short selling right now, you are definitely taking on a huge risk. I don't really know why threshold pump today. I don't, I don't actually think Gary is going to be fired. It would take a big partisan move for Gary to get fired, but he's making himself look really bad. Uh, we're going to go rip soon. The options contracts ending this week will pump the price. Hopefully. Remember Friday, I think we have a half. I think because of a good Friday, we might have a half day on the market, but that doesn't affect crypto as much as the stock market. But the stocks do have a little bit of pull on crypto. I'm hoping tomorrow will actually break a new all-time high. I don't really, I don't even see uh, look rare on coin market cap. I really don't even see look rare on CMC. So it's pro it's probably like really really new and it's probably uh, it might be on CoinGecko but it's not on CMC yet. Proppy? I mean if RW like if the RWA narrative really hits stride like I, I do think Proppy will come. Proppy is one of the older RWA coins. They've been trying to tokenize property for a long time. They've been trying to like, I think like some people know about them. They're not a big project, but, and I know they're around the San Francisco area, I think. What do you think? But I don't, I don't think they've actually been expanding the last few years. Maybe this is their chance. So it's 99.99% out. Is this a meme coin? If it's a meme coin, I'm not going to buy it because like the name doesn't pop out at me. Like you need, you need like a, you need really like a name and an icon that pops out or some kind of narrative. Let me see what this is. Decentralized community first NFT marketplace. I, I'm going to, oh, so it's NFT. So I'm going to tell you like, I'm not actually a fan of NFTs. I'm not a huge fan of NFTs. I, I think like outside of tokenization for real world assets and maybe a couple of other things, I'm not actually afraid of um, NFTs. And if it's on if it's on base layer Ethereum, I'm not going to bother with it for myself because base layer Ethereum still costs a lot to transact. 
So I'm I'm actually like I don't I'm not going to I'm not going to buy NFT tokens myself because I think the NFT craze was basically last cycle. Um, and I don't think the NFT craze is going to reach quite the same height this cycle because I think people are tired of paying like people aren't really in paying like millions of dollars for a JPEG. And that's kind of like what the craze was ca uh, was caused by. I, I'm sure like the NFT market will go up uh, as the market runs, but I don't think it'll reach quite the feverish pitch of last cycle because like last cycle, they were kind of a new thing. And you got to remember, like you can make NFTs on any blockchain now. It's not just Ethereum anymore. It's much cheaper uh, to make NFTs on other blockchains. So the fact that like there's so many other blockchains that have NFTs, like it, it cuts down on their rarity. It does cut down on their rarity and they're like not looked at like as such a shiny thing anymore. Like when, NFT, when I remember when NFTs came out, like everyone saw them as this new shiny thing that everyone wanted. They're no longer that anymore. There's so many of the damn things that like, you know, like NFTs are essentially just like a nothing burger at this point. Um, unless it's like by a famous artist or something. So I myself am not a huge fan of like JPEG NFTs unless they're for like real world assets or some like or some other use case, not just NFTs uh, itself. I don't think the hype. I don't think the hype for it, like million dollar JPEGs is going to be nearly as high as last time. There's just so many more NFTs now. Last time they were sort of rare. This time they're not rare at all. Like everyone and their mother can make NFTs for basically free. It does not cost like last time. Like when Ethereum was the only one, you had to pay like a hundred bucks to mint an NFT. Whereas like this time around, you can mint NFTs for like five cents. Where does all the extra money come from to pay leverage play gains? It's borrowed or something else. I'm not really sure. I'm sure there's people dumb enough to do payday loans for crypto, which is like a god awful idea. You, no one should take payday loans for crypto. Actually, no one should take payday loans for anything, not especially for crypto. Yeah, Blast did rug for sixty two million. Let's actually go after uh, go over that. Because uh, that's going to be uh, like a big talk. Blast did actually rug for about $62 million. So uh, it's called Munchables. But like they can't, you know, the, the, the weird thing is they can't actually get this money back pretty easily. And they probably will. Because like this whole thing is completely centralized. So I can just, they can just reverse the transaction. But it's, it's up to them to see if they will. So crypto game Munchables on Blast exploded for, for $63 million. A new NFT game built on Ethereum Layer 2 Blast has been exploited for nearly 17,500 Ethereum. A non-fungible token game called Munchables built on Ethereum Layer 2 Blockchain Blast has suffered a $62 million exploit. Uh, Munchables announced, I've never played Munchables, so I don't exactly know what it is. Uh, Munchables announced it had been compromised in a March 26 X post at 9.33 p.m. UTC. So they're still trying to look over their options for this Munchables. Yeah, they're definitely still trying to look over their options for this Munchables game. Uh, I'm not really sure if this is going to end well, though. I would tell your friend to get all his money off of KuCoin as soon as possible. Munchables announced it had been compromised on March 26 X post at 9.33 p.m. If you're friends from the United States and he's having trouble with KuCoin, he might just be screwed. Munchables has been compromised. We are tracking movements and attempting to stop the transactions. We will update as soon as we know more. So blockchain analyst Zach XBT uh, responded to the post with the wallet address of the alleged attacker, which currently touts a balance of $62.45 million in Ether. The wallet address of the exploiter shows that it interacted with a Munchables protocol at 926 UTC, extracting a total of 17,413 Ethereum. The exploiter's wallet address then transferred 10,700 worth of Ethereum through the Orbiter, Orbiter Bridge, transferring the Blast Ethereum back to native Ethereum. At 10.05 p.m. UTC, the wallet send, sent an additional one Ethereum to a fresh wallet address. So... Now, here is the weird thing about this. They can actually get it all back. Um, they can actually get it all back. So this is a good point. Technically, the Blast team could recover the $62 million loss. I think it's 63 in the end, but whatever, 62, 63. They could recover the $62 million loss in Munchable's exploit since they control the bridge contract that holds the bridge Ethereum STETH. It wouldn't, get, it wouldn't set a good precedent for future exploits and issues, but it is possible. An invalid state route would need to be forced by the black te blocked Blast team, which would erase the hacked transaction. The chain might need to halt completely do this. They're talking about Blast. So 
Some people are saying, while I'm strongly against this action on any other chain, I don't take Blast as a brand of serious decentralization chain, but instead as a place for games, experiments, and degenerate. I mean, that's perfectly fine. And the thing is, since your team has the God Keys, it's not decentralized anyways. So I don't really see why, I don't see why you would try to pretend it's decentralized. So like, so they're saying like, given that it doesn't seem off brand for them to intervene in defense of user experience, Optimism is Ethos alignment, but Blast is gamified social user experience. So because it is gamified social user experience, um, they might just reverse everything. Now, you're probably asking, if they're just gonna do that, why don't they just put it on a giant database? That's a very good question. And the true answer is, I don't know why they don't just put it on a giant database. It seems to me they should have just put it on Amazon Cloud instead. But I guess they want to experiment with blockchain even though it's not truly decentralized. So Blast indeed, Blast indeed is a centralized blockchain. Yeah, like Treat, if he's a US citizen, he's kind of screwed, honestly, unless like the transaction goes through because KuCoin isn't supposed to serve US citizens anyways. So like he's he's basically using KuCoin illegally. And so if you're using a if you're using a crypto exchange illegally and something goes wrong, you're kind of screwed because that's that's the uh, that's really the uh, risk you take in using a VPN and using a VPN to access a chain or using a um, using a chain illegally. Don't sleep on wax. Now they're fully supported with AWS. Nice, nice. So yeah, like this is a lesson to be learned. Don't actually use exchanges you're not supposed to use because if something happens, you're kind of screwed. Because like they don't technically have to help you if something happens. And there's like no customer service there. I mean, not that KuCoin customer service was the best around or anything. KuCoin customer service was pretty crappy anyways, but like you might not get an answer at all now from KuCoin if you're a US citizen. Cause like once you ask for help and you do like, um, once you once you actually ask for help and you have to realize, you have to reveal that you're a US citizen, they might just be like, nope, we don't work with US citizens next in line. So unfortunately he might just be like that. If you use exchanges like that, you know, you're pretty much, uh, yeah, more or less VPN. Anyways, they give a cutoff date last year for us citizens to get their funds off the exchange. Wait, but like, did, did I don't think KuCoin's KYC AML was that strict. Was it like, did you have to, did you do, did you have to do KYC AML just to have an account there? Some people might've just lied. I mean, realistically, some people might've just lied or gone through proxies or something like that. And that would be like really bad for those people because now they can't get their money off. And this is why you don't do that stuff. Because if you do that stuff, you know, you might end up with a situation like this where you, where you really can't do anything, unfortunately. Um, yeah, uh, I don't really know. I really don't know what to say about that. Except yeah, it does kind of suck. I mean, that's really the only thing I could really say about it. It's been, it's been strict uh, with KYC for a while. You know, I, I still, you know, but I've still seen like a couple of people from this chat. I've still actually seen a couple of people from this chat that said they actually use KuCoin from the United States though. A, a lot of, um, yeah, but a lot of, hey, thanks for subscribing, man. Like, but a lot of uh, exchanges are based in the Cayman Islands and that because of like tax reasons. So that doesn't really surprise me. I just don't hug. Well, I mean, if you're going to use max C at this point, like you're kind of using the same risk. Uh, if you, if you're, if you're using max C at this point, like you're, you're taking this same exact risk because you're not really supposed to use uh max C if you're a U.S. citizen. Right. So the, the thing is like, um, the thing is don't use exchanges that your country doesn't allow. Because if you run into trouble, and if you use the exchange a lot, you're bound to run into trouble sooner or later. If you run into trouble, you can't get any help. What do you think about Avalanche memes in the future? They might do well. I mean, I think if I think meme coins are going to go off Ethereum and go onto other chains. Either go off into Ethereum, like either go off into Ethereum, or go off into like layer twos. Yeah.
you look at RNDR, it's already a massive pump so far. How much higher? I mean, render it's an AI project, so it can go higher. It, it, it has actually pumped a lot. It's number 30 in rank. I can see this RNDR thing going to like, you know, $40, $50. Yeah, the grandfather thing doesn't really work for the United States because the government, our government officials aren't going to be too kind to like a grandfather clause or something. Um, that's not going to 1K though. Do you think, uh, I, don't, I don't trust any CEX. I think they're all a Trojan horse, at least with the decks, you have more freedom. But you also do need to cash out sometime sooner or later. And you generally can't do it off of decks. Try and police exchanges. Well, I mean, this is, it's not only the SEC, it's the DOJ as well. I mean, the DOJ comes against these exchanges for money laundering and tax evasion. Like, what they're really, like, what their real goal is, to, is to have every centralized exchange do KYC AML. That's what they're really trying to do. The SEC is like a small fry compared to the DOJ. Like, people aren't scared of the SEC the way they're afraid of the DOJ. Yeah, I have Brett. Someone gave me a couple of Brett. That's the only one I have. I think it's you're not no hope for him. Yeah, more or less. I mean, if he's in the U.S., he's kind of screwed, yeah. If he's in the U.S., then he is kind of screwed on that. Unless they magically appear in his wallet. Now, KuCoin withdrawals have been taking a while. So if, if it's only been like an hour or two, then he should wait. He, like, the only thing he can do is actually wait. Using the CEX for cash out is fine, but not for holding crypto in it. For the most part, yeah. Yes, thanks for the Brett, man. You can cash out peer-to-peer uh, -peer person. Who the hell cashes out peer-to-peer, -peer, man? Also, MEXC isn't peer-to-peer. MEXC is a centralized exchange. I have so much more emphasis on interoperability projects like uh, Chainlink and QNT, all the exchanges being in different regions and using a DEX. Hot and cold wallets really turns off retail. I mean, a lot, most retail just stays in like the familiar coins. It's only a portion of us that go out into like the, uh, the coin swaps and stuff. Base gas fees spiked with all the people using it. Uh, Ethereum's, look, I, I've already said Ethereum's main issue isn't layer twos. It's layer ones. Anyone can see that. I think NFT hype signals the bull run peak. I don't know if there's going to be that NFT hype, man. I think the, the hype for million dollar JPEGs is pretty much dead. And good riddance to it. Because, like, I thought it was getting really ridiculous about the BAYC stuff. I thought the BAYC stuff was getting a little too ridiculous, like how much they were costing. I sent my USDC to MEXC for... I mean, like, the liquidity for, like, NFTs was even worse than, like, random these random-ass meme coins. I sent my USDC to MEXC from Coinbase via Polygon, and it's still not sent. It, I mean, like, check tomorrow and see what happened. Like, I, I just, I really just wouldn't use MEXC. Like, I just really wouldn't use MEXC if I was in the U.S. Do you think cat memes will overtake dog memes in the bull run? I mean, there's a lot of Swifties out there. I don't really know how many Swifties actually invest in crypto. I, I don't know if MEXC went down or not. I am not aware of a Coinbase crash today. Means a whole best snack on Cardano, bread on base, Duco on Soul. I, I don't know if Mexi actually went down today or not. I know Coinbase didn't, but Mexi might have. Cat memes have more upside when they take off. I, I mean, they're I think they're the same. I mean, I don't really know what I don't know how ta how big Taylor Swift is in the crypto uh, verse though. I know Taylor Swift is like huge out in like. The real world world. But I don't know how big Taylor Swift is actually in the metaverse. I mean, not, not in the metaverse, but in the crypto world. I didn't even know Taylor Swift had a cat. But then again, I'm not a, I'm not a Swifty. So, you know, I bought my stick snack at Mexi. I mean, you don't have to go to Mexi to buy a snack. You just buy out off Eternal. Afraid to cross the bridge since the bridge collapsed. Ba I don't live in Baltimore, so that's a stupid question. Also, the bridges around here don't have giant cargo ships going under them because, you know, we don't we don't live by the sea. Uh, Taylor Swift to the moon. Uh, I mean, like, if Taylor Swift actually made a coin herself, it would instantly go to the moon. Yes.
if Taylor Swift herself made a coin, but then she would also get sued by the SEC. So I don't think Taylor Swift is that interested in making a coin. Also, Taylor Swift's already a billionaire, so I don't think Taylor Swift really cares about making a coin. Normies like Swift, Dajans like cats, who would have guessed? I mean, like, I will admit, some of Taylor Swift's music is kind of catchy, especially on road trips. It's just not like, I, I just don't really, I'm just not a Swift eaten. And I don't really see what the big deal is about her being at, like, uh, Kelsey. Like, I don't know why people complain about Taylor Swift being at Travis Kelsey's, like, football games. I'm just like, what the hell, man? Just saw in great contents. Thanks, man. Thanks for subbing. They show her for, like, 30 seconds per football game. If you can't deal with that, then you got problems. At what pace to exit Bitcoin? I think, like, if you think Bitcoin's... Like if you, after Bitcoin reaches like a hundred something K, whatever your mark is, you just exit like 20, 30% of the time. I don't want to, I'm starting to wonder. I will say like Taylor Swift is, Taylor Swift music sounds better to me. Although I don't really listen to Swift. Like, Taylor Swift music sounds better to me than rap music for the, for the most part. Why is Arrow mooning? I don't really know. I mean, Arrow is a DeFi protocol. I don't know if the TVL is increasing or something. I, I, I mean, one reason it's been mooning is because people have mentioned it a lot. I, I personally think modern rap music is god-awful for the most part. Have you ever try, uh, cried to a... No, I've never cried to a Taylor Swift song. Look, I, I listen to Taylor Swift music while I'm on road trips. It's great driving music. I don't really listen to her anytime else. I think Arrow is on decks on Bass Slayer. I, I want Dogecoin to break out. I want Dogecoin to get to a freaking dollar already so I can sell. Because, like... I've been holding Dogecoin for quite a few months. I wanted to get to a dollar so I can sell, so I can sell, take some cash out, and buy some other coins as well. I mean, that's what that's what Swiss music's really good for, driving music. I, I don't actually think Taylor Swift's music is good for much else, for me. I mean, it's not bad. It's just not like I, it's the stuff I listen to uh, regularly. Then again, I don't really listen to much music regularly, so yeah. Think Arrow is Dex on yeah. Uh, do you, I mean, base Dex might be blowing up because of the meme coins that are on base. So if Arrow is actually pumping because of that, it's pretty natural. Do you think uh, Brett will get past one billion? I mean, I hope it does because I someone because like one of you gave me some, but uh, I, I don't know. They said Ethereum and LTC are commodities in the latest court stuff. I mean, LTC, I don't think there's that much of a question, especially since, like, there's no one managing LTC at this point. I mean, realistically, though, like, after, like, they've been calling Ethereum a commodity for such a long time, I doubt, I doubt the SEC is going to be able to turn it back and call it a security. And Gary Ginzer will not say that Ethereum is a security. So that kind of, like, destroys his case right there. He, like, always tries to avoid calling Ethereum a security. Uh, the, his next target is three for Doge. I got, a uh, just broken even today. Nice, nice. I mean, I don't, I haven't put a thousand dollars in any meme coin. I mean, I put a couple hundred in snack, but that's about it. That's mainly just like, cause I like the Cardano ecosystem. There's a lot of crypto websites with news that have like really good crypto news, like Coindesk, Cointelegraph, uh, Crypto Panic is really good. I, I like Reading news and reading articles is going to do you a lot better for crypto news than like watching crypto videos. Because like crypto videos, honestly, like uh, honestly, like watching crypto videos, it's like there's there's too much hype. Coinbase related cryptos may pump for no reason because it's low market cap. No, I mean they might pump just because Coinbase might list them sooner or later. I do think Coinbase is waiting to win their lawsuit before they list more coins.
I don't really know how many Gen Z women know that Taylor Swift's cat is named Benji. I suppose the hardcore Swift fans will, but I suppose. I definitely think we're passing past the all time, blasting past the all time high this week. I mean, it, like, we moved like five, six thousand dollars on Monday alone. I have not watched Sandra Bullock. I actually haven't watched a Sandra Bullock movie since like Speed 2 or something like that. And that was a long time ago. Toshi are the best plays on base for memes. I think Toshi and Mochi are actually pretty catchy. I think they're actually pretty catchy names. So you might be right about that. But you know, like memes are memes. They last for a while and then they go down, unfortunately. Uh, unless you're talking about like one of the big ones. 20K on BTC or Brett. I would put I would not put 20k on Brett. 20k on BTC, yeah, not bad. I would put like $500 in Brett if you have that much. If you have if you just have money to throw at Brett, I would put like 500 bucks on Brett maybe, but I would not put 20k on Brett. Stock market will be closed on Friday, dude. It's I don't know if it's full day or half day on Good Friday. Uh, I, uh, are they naming rubbish meme coins? And also, just because the stock market closes does not mean the crypto market closes. Sci RS are a good source of news. I mean, that's kind of what Crypto Panic is. Crypto Panic is kind of like an RSS feed. Are rubbish, they don't have any purpose. Yeah, but Peter died. That's true for most cryptos, honestly. I, I mean, memes are a different kind of research. The research is like to see what's trending on social media. Uh, do you think the most top 50 will hit an all-time highs? I think like a lot of the top 50, yeah, probably most will actually hit the all-time highs. I mean, if you, if you really look at crypto, if you really look at crypto, you're basically investing in products that don't really have any real financial reports. That like supposedly we're investing in them because of this so-called utility that's coming. That they've sold us on for five years that hasn't materialized yet. So realistically, that's really what you're investing in when you're investing in crypto. So like, yes, while memes are worse than most cryptos, they're really not that much worse. I've loaded up on heaps of flux and praying it does well. Okay. Do you think, me yes, meme is going to be, a, like, meme has been a hot narrative this cycle, and I think will be a hot narrative through the rest of the bull run. When the bear market comes, though, it's all going to, it's going to, like, completely die, though. So you got to watch out. I think Sheeb is, like, too high at market cap to make huge gains. They are working on a mascot for Coinbase. They've also been funded and backed by base. Wait, doesn't Coinbase already have a logo? I suppose, it, I think if Coinbase does actually adopt one of those things as the logo, like it, it definitely would go up because people would think that's the official coin of Coinbase, which it isn't. But people will be, but people will be fooled. It's just like how like when Grok debuted, it went, like the Grok crypto debuted, it went way up because they thought it was Elon Musk's AI, but it had nothing to do with Elon Musk. Some dude just created Grok. So it's, it's kind of like that. Like people just make, like people just like make things that are like popular subjects and then they try to fool like crypto people and it works. Say that post and Shiba crap will go over $1. Yeah, people are pretty dumb. Like they're not going to, uh, Shiba's not going to a dollar. Shiba's not even going to a penny. Like if you look at the market cap and what the market cap would have to be at a dollar or a penny, you can tell it's not going to a penny. Not, it's really not that hard to tell. It's really not that tough to tell, man. Because uh, it just ain't happening. It really just ain't happening. Solana security. Uh, look, so it, it's like there's a lot of lawsuits going on. Either the SEC wins all, wins all of them or loses all of them. My guess is the SEC is going to lose all of them because it's just not going very well right now for the SEC. Shiba might make points. Shiba's not going to get to 70 cents. L look at what Shiba is right now. The most Shiba will do is it, it will drop one zero. It's not going to drop more than one zero at this point. You do realize there's like hundreds of trillions of Shiba, right? It's like 0 0.000031. If it can drop a zero and go 10x, it would be, it would be very good for Shiba. 
if it got to this point zero 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 three one, that would be a that would be really good returns based on where Shiba is in the ranking. Shiba isn't like, yeah, if it can go to like point zero zero seven, yeah, I don't think it's getting to point zero zero seven. That's still over like a hundred x away. So at this point, where from where Shiba is now, I don't think it's going two hundred x. I think like. I personally think Shiba getting to about a hundred billion market cap during the top of the bull run is possible. More than that, I don't really know. I stated in crypto as of November and haven't really experienced that parabolic bull run. When do you think? I mean, you kind of invested in crypto right when the parabolic bull run ended. So, I mean, the cycle is every four years. So I think you should like, there's another year and a half until you get to like uh, November, 2025. But I think it'll happen before then. So in the next year and a half, you should experience a bull run. Just make sure you sell on time. Nobody thought Doge would hit a penny either. Yeah, but that was like really super early on in crypto. We're not that early on in crypto. Eventually, I do think the crypto, the entire crypto market cap will reach 100 trillion. But it's going to take time. It's not going to happen this cycle. Yes, you're seeing like institutional funds roll in this cycle. But like going that high will take time. It's not like something that will happen immediately. You just have to wait 200 years. Who knows what it's going to be like in 200 years, man. 200 years is a very long time. What was I doing 200 years ago? What was I doing 200 years ago? Oh, yeah. I was a... I was a frontiersman in Louisiana Territory. That's what I was doing 200 years ago. The near founder touched the NVIDIA founder. I mean, okay, whatever. It's where at that time people were in crypto for tech and meme. Doge was a joke. I mean, Doge is still kind of a joke. No fee cycle. No. I, I, not everything needs to be tokenized. And even like trying to tokenize everything, that's going to take a large amount of time. It's not going to happen immediately. I, there, I do actually think a large amount of stuff will be tokenized. Not everything, though. You don't need to tokenize, like, hats or something. That's completely pointless. I think, like, properties and, like, fine art are two things that will be tokenized fairly quickly. AI coins will always trend high. I, I still think, like, the big AI coins are, like, really good, uh, are really good things to invest in. In 200 years, crypto is going to be, like, stock market, like Apple or Amazon. In 200 years, like, it, it could have been replaced by something else entirely. Like, remember, in 200 years ago, like, a lot of this stuff, like, computers, cars, planes, electricity, none of that stuff existed. So think about how much has changed in the last 200 years and what it will be like 200 years from now. I mean, we could be fighting, an ar we could be fighting a war with, like, Terminators 200 years from now. I think your hero target was 305 based on growth. I, I'm not. I'm not going to shift my uh, targets. That uh, I, I'm not really going to shift my targets. I think is with shares or crypto, the ones that have low circulation supply are better. Well, it, I mean, it depends what value you're going for. Yeah, the ones with low circulation supply definitely have more potential to get to a higher price per coin. But they also they also tend to be at a higher price when you buy them. I see flying cars. Yeah, I don't think you're going to see flying cars happen in our lifetime. I don't really think flying cars are feasible. They're um. You know, gravity is pretty tricky. Unless they can figure out a way to completely negate gravity, I don't think, I, I just don't think the energy is worth, I don't think they can get, I don't think you can get the energy to be worth it. 200 years from now, we'll be living underground and trading crypto. I don't really know. I mean, like looking at, like I said, looking at how much stuff has changed in the last 200 years, like I can't even imagine what we're going to be doing 200 years from now. Have you heard of Neon EVM and Solana? I have heard of, I have like heard of Neon EVM. Having good pump now? Nice, nice. You know, like a month from now, we'll be over the Bitcoin halving. I would say like two months from now, we'll be at 85K. I mean, but flying cars aren't commonplace though. Or go away and stop the stupidity. No, nah, the, the meme coins will never go away. And some of the meme coins like Floki are trying to make themselves utility coins, which I don't really know if it's going to work. But the meme coin stuff is never going to go away on crypto. Crypto is a market in a space that's like built for this stuff. 
I'm gonna kick the one that. Who were sold off Kukoa uh, fought her rookies. I mean, there wasn't really that much of a dip in the first place. But KuCoin, like, the, the exchange might actually be in trouble, though. It's just that, like, the entire crypto market's not in trouble. But the exchange itself might be in trouble. For Layer 2 have its own token, how does that help the base Layer 1? It's actually a really good question. Um, I think eventually it has to combine with a Layer 1. And you have to buy block space, I suppose. The king of memes, Doge, will get to a dollar. That's what I'm betting on with Doge. I'm really hoping Doge gets to a dollar. The thing is, m with money, that every 100 years, the system of value and economy changes. I mean, sort of, but realistically, we've been on paper money and stuff, like, for more than 100 years. I mean, we've been on fiat for more than 100 years. Penny, uh, I don't think Layer 2 will get there. I think they will. I think they will, but maybe not as big as some of the Layer 1s. Will AI Crypto keep going after the bull run? I think AI Crypto, like everything else, will drop. Because you got to remember, most AI Crypto is like BS anyways. Like it, there's Most crypto pro, AI crypt projects don't need a crypto. There's only very few that really need a crypto. I can see 85K in May. I don't know about April. Because like the halving happens like pretty... The halving honestly happens pretty late in April. And I don't think we're going to get above 85 until after the halving. Uh, we are technically still early in the digital age, so we're just more early in the crypto age. When will Cardano native tokens start taking off? Cardano needs more liquidity, man. Tell Charles to hurry the hell up and get USDC. Because this USDM stuff isn't working. Well, this is the first time they've actually been indicted. Like, this is the first time the co-founders have actually been indicted. Won't do as well because their vesting schedule sucks. I mean, they are pretty centralized, too. I mean, look at Blast. It's completely centralized. Dude, XR XDC is not surpassing Ethereum. Stop with your fantasy crap and stop shilling XDC. It's garbage. Been hearing KuCoin being in trouble for years, nothing will happen. Well, I mean, like, the exchange itself won't go down, but it'll get a lot more restrictive. I mean, we might have gotten off the gold standard in 1970, but it's not like we were using, like, gold to buy stuff. Is Sol or Ethereum? I mean, technology, like technology-wise and like ease of use-wise, Sol is a lot better than Ethereum right now. A mega million winner. I don't even have an XDC address. I'm not really interested. I'm not. The meme coins are fine. I'm not super interested in random coins. Just like people didn't see ATH or the having. I mean, we could get to an AT. We could get to eighty five k before having. It's not impossible. I don't really see it right now, but it's not. We're not that far off, honestly. It's like fifteen k. But the market hasn't really exploded since then. It might just be consolidating, though. Yeah, but cryptos and tokens. Every blockchain's better than Ethereum in terms of speed and fees. Blast is completely centralized. I mean, like, it's basically like an experimental chain for, like, games and crap like that. It's, it's had several rugs already. There's literally nothing on XDC, man. No one's using it. I mean, at least with these meme coins, we realize that they're short-term garbage. You're, like, treating, like, XDC as, like, the next big thing. It's not. It's been around for a while. It hasn't really done anything. And it's not going anywhere. You reckon AGIX can get to $5? I don't think any of us are saying that any of these meme coins are going to surpass Ethereum because it's not going to happen. 
You reckon AJX can get to five dollars? Maybe, maybe. It's a good idea to buy rubbish meme coins bundle rather than buy each individual. It's way better to buy a bundle. Uh, but like I, I think you need meme coins between the two and ten dollar ten million dollar mark. You don't really want to buy the ones under a million dollars. No, like they're okay with Kraken and Gemini too. They just want like they just want exchanges that they control to survive. Like they can't control the DEXs, they can't control the foreign exchanges. So they really want exchanges that they solely control to survive. Because then they can like control the flow of stuff. That's that's really what they want. Sometimes I don't get Right now, I just really don't like Ethereum. But, like, I gotta be realistic. XTC is not passing Ethereum. Like, I don't think any of these coins are actually passing Ethereum this boron. I think Ethereum is garbage for the first... I think Ethereum, like, transaction fees and speed is garbage. But, like, almost all the other chains are way better than Ethereum. So, like, if you're, like, the 50th place chain, you're not gonna all of a sudden come up and, like, become, take Ethereum's place. There's so many people in line before you. Fundamental of crap meme coins... Uh, Peter Adele, I mean, you got to look at the industry you're in. Like, the crypto industry, with, like, the lack of regulation, is literally custom-built for crap meme coins. Like I said, you, you got to deal with this... You either deal with this crap, or you, or, or you assent to regulation. And most people in crypto don't want regulation, so you got to deal with the crap meme coins. If you don't want regulation, you're going to get a you're going to get this stuff and people are going to be interested. It's just really that simple. There's a lot of people wanting to, there's a lot of people wanting wanting to legalize get legalize legally gamble without stepping foot in a casino. And essentially, this is what that is. There's a lot of people that want to try to time the market and play pump and dumps, and this is exactly what that is. If you don't have regulation, this is exactly what you're going to get in the market. There'll be like, you know, some coins that are actually good. And then the rest of it will be garbage that people pump and dump. But this is exactly what we ask for in crypto. Like, this is what pe crypto people are asking for. If you don't want to play the garbage stuff, just stay out of the garbage stuff and buy the decent coins. But don't, like, uh, but, but don't, uh, but don't try to put down the people that want to bet on garbage coins. Because that's what crypto, like, that's what a market like this is all, half- that's a huge part of the market, right? That's a huge part of a market like this. That's unregulated. This is like, you know, the thing is like Peter Dell, there are, there are people that thought the market could regulate itself. The market can't regulate itself. Markets have never been able to regulate themselves. This is exactly what you get. This is, at, this is exactly what you get when you ask for like less regulation. And you know what? I love it. It's great. I think it's great. I'm much like, yes, freedom. But that also means freedom for scammers to scam people to a certain extent. Obviously, if you pull something like FTX, you run afoul of other laws. The Big E32, if you only want good projects, go invest in the stock market. If you want tighter regulations, go invest in the stock market. Like, if you want looser regulations, if you don't want the SEC to have control, if you want the feds to leave you alone, if you want the feds to leave you alone, this is exactly what you're going to get. How could you possibly think that it's something else? You don't think people are going to take it. You don't think there's going to be a lot of people that try to take advantage of the market and take advantage of the freedom to put up this crap? Of course they are. Of course they are. This is a feature. This is a feature of an unregulated market. It's it's not like it's it's not a, 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 it's actually not like a bug. It's a feature of the unregulated market. I don't love Ethereum. I think Ethereum is garbage. I'm actually glad meme coins have moved to Solana because like Solana is actually much cheaper to trade in. I want everyone to get off of Ethereum and go to Solana or another chain.
her a lot of scam penny stocks. I mean, I meme coins are not. Transactions should be fast and cheap. But the problem is every one of these, every other one of these L1s have fast and cheap transactions. XDC does not stand out. XDC does not stand out. Yeah, but like Big E32, listen to yourself. You chose a market that's not regulated. Like, how could you not see that this was going to be a feature? You literally chose yourself a market that's not regulated. So, I mean, it is all numbers on a screen, but with the stock market, you actually have things to gauge, like you gauge projects. I mean, but like, and also in crypto, you don't have solid numbers to gauge projects to really determine what a crypto is actually worth. I mean, what do you have? How much TVL you have? I mean, I do use that as a metric, but TVL can also be faked. Except you have a, if you have a low TVL, that can't be faked. If you have a high one, it can actually be faked. Like, what exactly metrics are you using? How many transactions you have? People can spam transactions. It's not really that difficult. Like, you don't have, like, you don't really have solid numbers, like PE ratios, profits, you know, like, net income, all these stuff. Crypto doesn't have any of that stuff. And which one of these coins, tell me, which one of these coins, aside from Bitcoin, which one of these coins actually has its value because of utility? I'm waiting. Which one of these coins does utility equate most of its price? Or even 20% of its price? I'm waiting, man. I'm waiting. Sol Solana would work if it was a penny. But look, Stacks is obviously, like, Stacks is fine, but it's also built on hype, obviously, like the rest of these cryptos. It, uh, look, the Jupiter, like, valuation was obviously based on hype. I, I, like, Jupiter is a governance coin, honestly. Like, those things are like governance coins and yield farming coins. You don't really need them to be any price for Jupiter to actually operate. XDC is exactly like every other chain out there, Bobby Jonas. There's nothing special about it. So that TIA, Celestia has been getting a bit of hype, so I can see it come up. I, I don't know if Maker's going to get to 6K. Ethereum only really has utility value because it's crippled. That's the only reason it has utility value. Now, MicroStrategy definitely has stuff backing it up. They own a bunch of Bitcoin. I don't really care much for the CBDC. I don't think the CBDC is going to happen just because I don't think there's a need for the CBDC. There's not a wild, there's not a demand for the CBDC. Toncoin is Telegram coin. I don't exactly know why Telegram needs a coin, but they kind of have one. It's very, very unlikely that Bitcoin goes to zero. Yeah, but realistically, unlike stocks, which are based, unlike stocks, which a lot of it's actually based on prices and like uh, profits and cash flows, crypto is not based on any of that stuff. A lot of these L1 tokens don't really have to have that much value at all or any value for their chains to actually operate. So you really can't say like, you know, you can't really say, oh, Solana can't operate if, it's, if it was a dollar. Solana can operate fine if it was a dollar. Or like Doge can't, as a chain, can't operate if it's like 0.1 cents. Of course it can. It operated at 0.1 cents for a long time. I mean, you could also sell cryptos and get extra, uh, extra money. I mean, if it wasn't for the ETF stuff, Bitcoin could actually, Bitcoin can actually operate it that way as well. They earn fees. But most of them don't survive. Like right now, at least right now, most of them don't survive on earning fees. We know that Solana doesn't because like the, we know that Solana doesn't because we know that 95% of the nodes are subsidized 
by the in institution themselves. Dogecoin doesn't really run on fees either because like people are still mining Dogecoin. That's how they're getting it. Cardano hasn't finished like releasing their supply. So we know it doesn't, we know that it doesn't actually run on fees either. Some chains will gain utility value. It's going to be a long time before they truly gain uh, utility value. And I think people are going to realize once they do how small that, how small some of that utility value is. USDM growing. USDM is going to take forever. I need, uh, Charles needs just to get, Charles just needs to give up on his ego and get USDC. I don't care if it costs like $7 million or whatever. It'll be really good for the ecosystem if he just throws in the towel and gets USDC. I move a small amount of Ethereum to Sol Network without getting, um, you really can't, unfortunately. If you're on Ethereum's base layer, you just kind of have to eat the fees. Now, I don't think there's anything happening with the exchange. Will Jasmine News pump 2x? Dude, no one cares about XDC. Stop shilling your shit coin. I don't want to deal with this idiot anymore. His only purpose in here is to shill his crap coin. My personal thesis on crypto is BTC is king and everything else will keep trying till there is value behind it. The research out of crypto goes a real thing. Look, uh, the blo blockchain technology, I believe, is, is valuable, but very few of these cryptos actually have any real utility value. Like, like they're try like they all sell us on theoretical future utility value. So like, yeah, it requires some very very small value. It requires a, a, a some very small value t in order to not be DDoSed. So they do have some purpose. But realistically, like the utility value does not justify their price. Like the only the only real utility value for the the only real utility value for gas is that like so the chain doesn't get spammed by DDoS. But outside of that, the chains can run if they don't. Outside of that, the chains can run if the, uh, on like 0.2 percent, like 0 0.001 percent uh, fees. I mean, the big thing too, we've seen Hedera have a thousand TPS, right? It has done nothing for their price. So it's not like the utility or the transactions or anything or the fees really help with the price. Ethereum is literally the only exception and that's because they and that's really because Ethereum is crippled. Why does SEC want There's a lot of there's enterprises that use Hedera. But I mean Hedera has like a thousand TPS. There are enterprises that use Hedera, but the TPS and the transactions don't amount to value. Hedera doesn't have to be at any set price for the chain to function. But people are using their chain. There's like enterprises like Avery Dennison actively using their chain. That's why they have a thousand TPS, but that doesn't translate to value. If VET gets used for putting supply chains on blockchain, I mean, we don't really know what that translate to, translates to, though. Like, because Walmart hasn't really given it utility value. Yes, like DeFi might give it utility value because people have to lock up money. Like, that's why I think DeFi is going to be the utility on blockchain. But right now, that doesn't like. But right now, like DeFi gets the hype really pumped up because I don't really know like how much the coins have to be even with DeFi. The fees don't look. The on-chain fees don't really are aren't really the value of these things right now. It's like it's the money locked in the chains that generates the value and the cost. I haven't looked at Ren. It's really the money locked in the. It's really the speculative money locked in the chains themselves that gives it value. But like, I would say DeFi, I would say DeFi is like 100% spec, well, not 100, maybe like 95% speculation. And I don't, I, I like a lot of small DeFi protocols aren't any better than meme coins. DeFi used for staking stuff and illegal stuff. 
anything can be used for illegal stuff. Like, just because it's DeFi doesn't mean it's illegal. Looked at PYTH before, seems promising against going against Link. PYTH is going to be like Solana's Oracle. Is needed to stop Ripple from violating securities laws. But Ripple didn't violate any securities laws. Like, the SEC is, like, literally making crap up because, like, Congress hasn't really determined that, and the SEC is not supposed to make the law. It's supposed to enforce the law. Unfortunately, there's no actual law there for them to enforce, so they're trying to make up a law for them to enforce. I don't care if you own XDC or not. It's not a coin that's worth shilling. It's not a coin that's worth shilling, and I doubt it's going to do all that while this bull run. It's a coin that got some hype with the ISO thing, but realistically, no one, like, there's really no activity on it right now. I think it's a good if it's Solana's main oracle. I mean, it depends how big Solana grows. I'm not a, f a fan of uh, XDZ Tezos. I mean, the, the top ones are Ethereum, Uniswap, which is based on Ethereum, and Bitcoin, which also has a lot of fees. A, a lot of these are like Ethereum or Ethereum Layer 2 where you have to bridge. I don't know if a a a AVE is AVAX, and then there's BNB Smart Chain. I'm, I'm not, look, XDC, there's also nothing on XDC at this point. Yeah, but, uh, but look at the, but look at the fees. Yeah, of course it's all going to, no, I'm BNB smart chains, obviously not Ethereum. Mo, a lot of this is like trading fees off of DeFi. The, the Ethereum ones are just because Ethereum's expensive. I mean, the rest of them are under a million dollars. XDC is just another coin, man. There's, there's nothing really special about XDC. It got some hype via R3 and the ISO stuff, but realistically, like, it's just another coin. No, the bull run is not over. Jupiter is probably still way down there. Also, Jupiter is an aggregator. It's it's not an actual dex itself. It's an it's an aggregator. Except it's not the real Ethereum killer. Yeah, I mean, look, I I've been saying that DeFi is DeFi is going to be the main. Uh, DeFi is literally going to be the main um, utility on uh, on crypto, but that doesn't mean the main chain has to have like that much of a value. Uh, that much like the coin has to be that high. Yeah, I mean, Mario Chris Swoop, no one's, like, very few people have heard about XDC. It's not one of the main chains. So him stating, like, it's the Ethereum killer is absolutely ridiculous. It's not the Ethereum killer. Like, there's about 50 other chains ahead of XDC in line to take over Ethereum. QNT's not dead. But once again, like it had, it doesn't really expand on its ecosystem. How is Ethereum killer when no one? It's not the Ethereum killer. No one uses XDC for anything. Like it got some hype off of R three, and then like it just like no one talked about it ever again. That's cool. They they just reset the one point one. Like realistically, I don't care if I win one point one three billion or like 200 million, it's the same to me, because like that can buy me anything I want. 
uh, DOJ gets pink eye. The DO, I've been saying that, look, I've been saying this, the DOJ is way scarier than the SEC. That's why the KuCoin, like the, the KuCoin founders have basically fled. Tap into Mantle, check and chart. Look, guys, stop trying to look at, stop trying to look at meme coin charts. Meme coin charts are completely useless. Not meme coin charts. I mean, all charts are pretty worthless because they depend too much on Bitcoin. No, they are working with Indian banks, but we don't really know like how the coin's actually being used in the banking software. I mean, it's a really big, it's a pretty big market cap coin. It's like $3 billion market cap. I wouldn't worry too much about quantum resistance tokens because I don't think quantum solving crypto is going to be a thing. No, you can't really, I mean, this is a, I, I don't really know what the hell happened here. But you also have to realize that this isn't that big of a surge. This honestly is not that big of a surge because it's like 96 cents up to like $1.16. It just looks big, but you're not looking at this value. Like it basically went up like 20, 30%. So it's not a huge surge. It's a decent surge, but it's not like a massive, ma it's not like it quadrupled in a day. It's just that like this coin has basically had no action for forever. And now it just like suddenly surged. And it's, it's honestly been coming up too. So like, I don't know if I would get in now unless you really like the project. Are calling for, there's look, 85, 90, these are, look, Mario, Chris, Snoop, these are the same people that said like Bitcoin wouldn't get to its all time high. But since Bitcoin broke its all-time high, they have to make another prediction. I doubt the top is going to be 85, 90K. I doubt the top is going to be like 85 or 90K. Don't think either, so I just... No, like... Yeah, they, I mean, they are just being conservative, but like these same people were saying that we're not going to break the all time high or give or like using their models and Fibonacci stuff to say like, you know, how like Bitcoin is the Bitcoin bull run this time is going to be like, not going like, to, the Bitcoin bull run is going to stop at like 55K or something. Not, none of that stuff happened. The, the top is definitely like uh, six figures. Yes. Guys, please hit the likes. What do I, th I think RWA coins might do pretty well. I think AI coins will do well. And obviously there's going to be meme shoot ups every other day or so, but you don't really know which meme coin it's going to shoot up. You think 100K will have crazy sell pressure? I think there'll be definitely be a resistance at 100K, but I think eventually we'll get past it. You, you check Shogun? Uh, like min swap and all that stuff depends on Cardano getting more liquidity. I think Proppy is just getting pumped overall by the RWA narrative, which I, I don't blame it. I think the RW narrative, RWA narrative is actually pretty good, which is better Sui or Soul. That's a tough one. I would probably get Sui, but it's hard to say. If we were, I think we're going places we never thought we could this bull run. Yeah, I think this bull run is going to be better than the last one, but it, I don't think it'll reach quite the heights of 2017 because 2017 was just crazy. What are your thoughts of the rabbit R1? I have no idea what that is. It sounds like another meme coin. Now, it, it depends on the L1, but it also depends on the liquidity. Like, I, I just I just need, I Charles just needs to let up and get USDC. USDM is going to take forever to actually, like, work right. 
or like work the way it's supposed to because USDM is too small. And it's going to take a long time to grow. You can't just mint like 100 billion coins out of nowhere. VET is, I, I highly doubt VET is going to hit those heights. The article predictions are generally crap. They're always way too bullish. Unless they're just following some kind of like straight line graph, which isn't really relevant either. Mantra DAO was a hidden gem for those that staked early days of Polygon. They uh, started as a validator. Okay. ADA is definitely, I think ADA is going past $3. Look, Cardano got to $100 billion last time, I believe, or at least pretty close. I think it's going to pass $100 billion this time. Uh, getting a 4x right now on price is not that difficult. Isn't the Rabbit R1 that handheld AI device? I I don't I don't know what that is. A hundred billion ADA is like less than three dollars. Yes, a hundred billion ADA is like two fifty actually. Two like two seventy. So Taylor Swift won the Super Bowl this year. I mean, the Chiefs are a pretty good team. It's like the Chiefs were like the Chiefs were winning Super Bowls even before they started dating. So you can't really say like Taylor Swift was the reason they won. And honestly, that Super Bowl game was like the one of the better called ones I've seen. If anything, the the refs try to throw it to the other team. Uh, yeah, you think Visa and MC are scared? I don't think so because both Visa and Mastercard are trying to get partnerships and work with crypto. They're like Visa and Mastercard are like two of the biggest crypto advocators out there. So I, I don't really think they're really that scared of crypto, man. Dude, I don't like people spamming nonsense, Zook. If he keeps like spamming nonsense, I'm just going to ban him permanently. I'm not interested in like shills like him. Uh, is it because of ETF? You can't compare last ATH. It's gonna have to pick it up. It's been bleeding against BTC and Ethereum. Yeah, but most coins have been bleeding against Bitcoin and Ethereum. What the hell is Rabbit R1? I mean, if they just named it after, like, an AI device, they're just trying to, like, rack up some short-term gains. I, I mean, it does look like they're just trying to, ba like, get some hype off whatever the hell this is. No, I don't own a Raspberry Pi. This is not an X XDC shill channel, so you can't just type the same thing about XDC over and over again. That like he keeps on typing it's an Ethereum killer. No one cares about XDC. You can shill it once or twice, and then people are just tired of it. No one wants you shilling XDC all day. I can't withdraw my Casper from KuCoin. KuCoin's been having problems. Like KuCoin just got sued. All right, like KuCoin got a uh, KuCoin got indicted by the DOJ, so you you might have some problems. Yeah, I'm not re I'm not replacing my phone with a Rabbit R1. I think like Jasmine can get to about thirty cents at the top of the bull run. That's what I'm hoping for. Thinking when Grayscale stops selling, we'll move up again. Grayscale stopped selling uh, last week. I mean, we moved up. We moved up like five thousand points afterwards. Did you take a look at Sheev. Yeah, if you keep on shilling it, everyone. If you keep on shilling it nonstop, you're going to get banned, and I'm going to think it's a garbage coin. 
So he should stop shilling it after like one or two things about it. You're not going to convince anyone to buy XDC. You're just going to make your coin look bad if you keep shilling it. I mean, it's another Inu coin. What can I say? It's, it's another Inu coin. That's on uh, all the, most of the coins are out. Dude, I'm just looking for a dollar for Doge. Uh, KuCoin won't let me withdraw Caspa. Yeah, because KuCoin just got like indicted by the DOJ. They're like they're in legal trouble, so they might be having some issues. I mean, I that's not something I can help you with, man. And dude, if if you're if you're in the U.S., you're if you're in the U.S. and you're still using KuCoin, you're kind of screwed, honestly. I have Hulk. It calls it as phone calling capability. Which uh, which game was exploited? It was called uh, Munchies, uh, Munchables. That's got what got exploited. Cool. I mean, like, if, wait for a couple hours, see if you get it. But there's quite a few people having problems drawing from KuCoin. It probably also depends on the chain or the network as well. If you if you can withdraw or not. Took mins for me. Dude, Solana's fees are basically free at this point. And it takes like five seconds to move. So like you're not going to attract people away from other chains. With XDC. V, like, if it's not building an ecosystem right now, no one's going to go to it. Anonymous crypto wallets are now banned in Europe. Um, no, that's not true. They only ban hosted wallets. So, like, MetaMask, Phantom, and things like that aren't affected. It's only, Phantom, it's, it's only hosted wallets. Won't hit it if the ecosystem wasn't growing, but it's so. I think MinSwap can hit a dollar, honestly. Like, I think MinSwap, Moosey Swap both have a chance of hitting like a dollar. Real, realistically, ADA just needs more liquidity. Cardano just needs more liquidity. Where's MinSwap at now? He's like two, three cents or something. It, these are like, look, ADA just needs more liquidity right now. If, if ADA has more liquidity, they can come up very fast, but they need more liquidity. Yeah, I'm wearing the float. I am wearing the Floki shirt because I actually got a bigger Floki shirt. It's actually not a bad shirt. It's like four cents right now for MinSwap. The problem is like these ADA coins don't really have liquidity. Will they shut down KuCoin? I don't think they can shut down KuCoin, but they're definitely going to get it out of the U.S. once and for all. They're going to... They're, they're going to... Uh,
I can afford Apple Android for brokies. I mean, there's like really cheap Android phones out there. Dude, Cardano's definitely hitting 100 billion in terms of market cap. That's not that hard to hit. All want US exchanges to rule the market because they're investing them. It's not so much, I mean, I think it's more the government. Because I'm sure BlackRock and, uh, and Fidelity are invested in foreign companies as well. So I, I think it's just mainly the government like wants to like control the tax money and the money flow. Do you think Binance will add Jasmine after the new partnership with Panasonic? I mean, I hope they do, but I kind of doubt it. If they do, though, it might pump Jasmine some. I mean, eighty Jasmine's already on Coinbase. Yeah, Binance.us is different. Binance.us and Binance are two different things. Now, how do you think MinSwap will hit 25 cents? Look, Cardano needs to get liquidity. Like, the thing is, not getting... Like, just... Charles just, like, being against USDC because he doesn't want to pay them money is kind of dumb. They have enough in the treasury. They just need to vote and get USDC over. Because relying on USDM to grow their ecosystem is not a great idea. It, it's going to take forever to grow. There's just not enough, there's not enough USDMs for them to grow. I don't think AI necessarily needs to be a layer once. It just has to be AI. And AI, like, what the hell? I, I don't know if there's anything different about an AI layer one. What do you think about Alex Lab? I mean, the only older chain that's grown is actually, like, the only two older chains that have grown are, like, Binance and Solana. I don't understand. I don't really understand how an L1 like is AI. I think they just call it AI for the most part. I don't know if they're actually AI. All right, bullish and ICP or FIL. I'm actually bullish on ICP. I don't know about FIL. ICP trying to get into AI may be good. I think everyone's supposedly trying to get into AI just so their coin will rise because they know AI is hot. How many of them are actually AI? Who knows? There's probably a lot of those projects that don't have anything to do with AI or they're just barely touching AI. They're like, oh, we're an AI coin, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? They can call themselves whatever the hell they want. Whatever the hell their little heart desires. Because ICP in the end, it's basically a blockchain with cheap storage, which isn't bad. But is it AI? I don't know. I don't think so.
I mean, I bet I can call it. I I bet I can uh, call a coin like Enu AI, and it would go insane because it's Enus and it has AI. It doesn't really have AI, but that isn't really all that relevant whether it has real AI or not. I think BTC will peak like late this year or early next year. Like if I if I, if I called if I made a coin and called it Ancient Enu AI. Ancient Inu Overlord AI. I bet it would do great. All right, guys. That's going to be it for tonight. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell notifications button. I will be back tomorrow. And I will see you guys later.